This is India's first commercial quantum computer. It looks nothing like a desktop computer. In Bengaluru at the office of Qpi AI India Private Limited, the quantum computer fills up an entire room with atoms cooled down in a refrigerator to a temperature much less than the outer space. Amidst the buzz, thrums and electronic chimes in the room, a team of engineers are eagerly watching how the cooled atoms behave to send signals. The theory behind quantum computers comes from a non-intuitive notion. For example, when the coin is flipped in the air as it spins, the outcome that is heads or tails is hard to determine. Conceptually, the heart of a quantum computer lives here, where the fundamental unit exists in a superposition of both states at once, a century-old theory in quantum physics. Zeros and ones are not part of the quantum computer operations, unlike a classical computer. When I looked into quantum computer, I thought like, my, my god, this is extremely parallel thing and that's the next transition for intelligence modeling. Hi, the word quantum is buzzing internationally as well as nationally. This year, I mean 2025, marks the 100th year of celebration of the early development of quantum mechanics as a science. And uh, 2025 is regarded by the UN that we need to celebrate this year to understand how the fundamental science has evolved into a technology. A few weeks ago, in city of Bangalore, we had the National Quantum Summit. And from the print, we have extensively covered what the summit means for the nation. In this episode of Print's Ground Report, we are trying to understand how does a quantum computer look like and why do we need a quantum computer? I'm at the office of Qpi AI. Hope on with me. This is Ananda Padmanabhan and you're watching the Print's Ground Report. So the first condition, one of the criteria of using this quantum computer is that we have to make this quantum processor very cold. So this is the cryogenic setup we have. Uh, it just its main function is to just cool this inside chamber to a very low temperature to millikelvin level temperature. Only then at that temperature the quantum effects of the processor will manifest actually. So so this is the dilution refrigerator. It's known it happens it the cool, cooling effect happens in three stages. Uh, so, and this is our signal generator board. We send microwave signals through these wires up to the processor. It interacts, these microwave signals interacts with the uh, processor and then we get an output signal back. Now by analyzing this input and output signals, we can uh, interfere or we can infer about uh, the effects of the quantum processor. Zeros and ones are not part of the quantum computer operations, unlike a classical computer. The quantum computer makes use of fundamental quantum properties of atoms to exist in different states at the same time. So, the computer gets ready with multiple solutions at the same time and no longer the solutions are approximations but accurate results. Assuming I gave you a picture of Mona Lisa and I told you, look, you have this matchbox which has got about match, match sticks. Just draw a Mona Lisa using this match stick. So you place the match sticks in a certain way and you make a Mona Lisa. Now, if I look at that from a, say a 100 feet or maybe 50 feet above, sure, it might look like Mona Lisa because the, uh, the match stick, while it is straight and there are edges to it, it sta starts getting a little smoother as you start moving away from it but when you get closer to it which is you know starting looking deep and pouring into that image you see that the image is not really perfect because it's got this matchstick imperfections now what if i then told you look throw away the matchsticks i'm not going to give you a brush with paint and now you paint it now you get the smooth curves so even though you might be looking at it at a really close distance you see it like mona lisa and that's what quantum tries to do which is you're not approximating to those imperfections but you're actually getting very close to the way nature really has put out uh, any of its say combinations any of its way of computation and we're trying to mirror that through a quantum computer so this is generally used for uh, you know research algorithm modeling in quantum computer uh, with quantum computer and then it is used for education purpose okay so uh, there is a small mo molecules that we can model uh, it's like 28 atom molecule so that was modeled very well so this car computer was used for modeling those kind of atoms those kind of molecules 28 atom molecules 
so the current one we are building a system software here and the platforms pharma material and then logistics and then automotive these are the main applications we are looking into and there are also some applications in terms of uh, you know uh, the metrology and also some application related to the fertilizers okay so these are the some of the works uh, that may happen but mostly we'll do with our partners we'll enable them in by providing quantum computer and they will do the further research on this typically the and what you call is the cryogenics um, so the dilution refrigerator is typically built for quantum computers by one or two organizations only in the world uh, that for a quantum computer is not a core competency for let's say a cupai ai it's not a core competency for us to build a dilution refrigerator but that said you know there will be obviously that small element in the entire supply chain which will not be indigenous the computing part of it which is the control electronics the microprocessor the the overall wiring the logic around it the fabrication all of that is indigenous right so that will all continue to be indigenous the dilution refrigerator currently is not indigenous i'm sure in in near future it might change and that's when we'll have a fully indigenous stack quantum computer also i mean you said that quantum computer bypasses the limitations of a classical computer by getting into more sophisticated operations yeah and uh, very naive but then will we ever use a quantum computer to send the email is that really necessary uh short answer yes and no you will use a quantum computer to send an email but a quantum computer send a quantum encrypted email right so we were, we are now looking at quantum uh encryption quantum crypto the intent is that at some point in time when you start getting more and more stronger and powerful quantum computers you will be able to break into the existing uh way of encryptions and decryptions that exist today to which you will have to build quantum safe networks you'll have to get into quantum cryptography you'll have to get into quantum key distribution so once you get into that which is what today the defense forces are experimenting on it at some point in time i'm sure it might be more prevalent between uh, common use you might have an email that might be sent which is uh, encrypted on a quantum safe algorithm or uh, and then sent over a quantum safe network but then then won't that won't be a simple how are you doing or hello message right to be because i'm i'm talking about the energy ex- expense of running a quantum computer is it can be can be matched incidentally the energy that a quantum computer uses is a fraction of energy that a regular gpu or a cpu uses uh the energy of a quantum computer is really at the time of it being bought up which is when you start cooling a quantum computer uh you start moving in from a certain temperature to down to a certain temperature which is a superconducting properties of the chip is exposed but post that there is no energy that a quantum computer or there's very little energy that a quantum computer uses and therefore quantum computers are extremely energy efficient so at some point in time there will when you start looking at a gpu farm doing a particular calculation or a particular workload and a similar qpu farm or a quantum computer processing unit farm doing a particular calculation the just the energy requirements will be in exponentially different they'll be massively uh, in the scale of 10 to the power of x in terms of the energy requirement that a gpu farm requires whereas a qpu farm will require a fraction of that we if we are able to find room superconducting materials that mm. can access at the room temperature will this be a revolution in quantum computing it might be it might be i mean that might be the um, you know holy grail that if you could ex- get a material that be at a superconducting at room temperature then suddenly that dilution refrigerator requirement goes away right i'm sure there's work going around that i'm sure there is a lot of research going around it but it's it's to be seen you know we i don't want to play stargazing and and say that it's going to happen in certain number of years mm-hmm. but science is science you know never say never and the challenges on the deep tech it's very simple like uh, you need to model your business in such a way that uh, you can really ride out uh, deep tech uh, you know development cycle okay so what happens with deep tech is it's not like your uh, services or the software revenues where uh, it comes early but when it comes it comes big right say for example uh, if you are building some deep tech uh, thing like uh, you know some sensors or uh, of like as uh, quantum computer or communication equipment or a chip what happens is initial first few years is all about hitting the milestones and after you generate first revenue revenue is recurring 
and the margins are high right so you need to model the business and communicate to your investors or your team that this is how it takes right and after that it also depends on the founder leadership the leadership is very important and the founding team and the founders and the co-founders has to make sure that they have a clear path were charted out and they are very going approximately in the path to reach their vision okay so these two has to be very uh, what should i say very strong footed or firm footed right so if this is there i think we can navigate the deep tech see if you if you get an investor who want to invest in saas when they invested in deep tech and you are unable to communicate to them that this is how long it takes then it will be the lot of chaos that builds in so leadership of a founding team is very important in deep tech they communicate and they make sure that these are the things uh, what is expected from the engineers who join to build a career and the founding members co-founding members and a new hire right so that is the challenge we have so just like how i use my mobile phone mm-hmm. when will i be able to use a quantum computer is can can this be accessible to common people yeah on the cloud it will be accessible not like you will have a private device you will never have a private device it may be but it may be like uh, uh, you know uh, it will be very small uh, use case of a quantum computer if it is handheld device which will be running on a uh, uh, few qubits but then the the most powerful will be on the data center and of course you will be able to access on the mobile some applications you can directly use quantum computer to access it like for example uh, say you have a chat gpt today okay it's running on the servers but you can access on the mobile i think that moment will come on quantum computer also it's very much foreseeable when will we get to use a quantum computer or precisely asked or said or when will we get an access to using a quantum computer that's a dream yet to be true Until next time this is Ananda Patmanabhan signing off from the print you have just watched the ground reports from Bengaluru